All right, I said I would explain my 12 volt, 24 volt uh, electronic situation here. So I'm gonna do that now. And uh, for anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about, I've got this bulldozer I'm making here and the motor and most of the stuff runs on 24 volts. But I've got two things that run on 12 volts. And I only have one power supply and it's 24 volts. And I'm not getting a couple extra batteries or an extra battery just to power these two little things, which are just relay switches, basically. Um, so I mentioned something about using resistors, and I got a lot of recommendations to not do that. And, and I, I did do that, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But first I'll tell you why I didn't do the, the, the two recommendations I kept getting. Okay, one recommendation was to get a, t a 24 to 12 volt converter of some kind, like somehow electronically convert 24 volts to 12 volts in some electronic box of magic and then have the 12 volts go here and there. Uh, there are two problems with that. One is I'm trying to make this thing less complicated, not more complicated, and that would complicate it more. It's another piece of complicated electronics that if it breaks, I can't fix it, I have to get a replacement. The other reason is that uh, I'm on an island in Central America, and getting things here is not easy. So if, if I want to like order something from the States, like off Amazon or eBay or something like that, I have to get it shipped to a place in Florida, and then once a month, a shared shipping container leaves there and comes to town here, and then I can drive an hour to go get it. Now that entire process takes about two months. So it takes me basically two months to, to get new parts here if I, if I want to order them from outside. Uh, someone mentioned that I could get things in Panama City, but Panama is like a long skinny country and I'm way at one end and Panama City is way at the other end. It would be an overnight trip and some considerable expense to, to go all the way there and back. And I'm not going to all that trouble to get a voltage converter that I don't want anyway. Okay, the other suggestion was to just wire these two things off two of the, the four batteries. Because I've got four 6-volt batteries that are not here, they're sitting over there. But, you know, if I ran wires from two of the batteries, I would get 12 volts and then I could power my 12-volt stuff. Well, the major problem with that is that will unbalance the batteries. So if I'm, say, you know, as you use your batteries, the energy level goes down and you charge it back up and down and back up. And if everything stays even, your batteries are balanced. But say these two batteries, I'm sucking off a little more power every time, so as they charge and discharge, ooh, I keep losing a little more off this side than this side. So when the batteries charge, how does it know when to stop? It checks the overall voltage, and then it stops at the appropriate time. But since they're unbalanced, it'll end up overcharging this one. And then if I'm draining the batteries pretty low, my auto shutoff will let these two batteries get too low before it shuts off because it will kind of average it out. And this is the kind of thing where the more I use it, the more unbalanced it gets. Now I can charge it, uh, equalize charge it, which basically overcharges the batteries until the higher one just starts boiling off water and it's not charging anymore, and then the other one catches up. And then you have to put water into this. Okay. This entire mess is easily avoidable. Now the reason people were saying to do that instead of uh, the resistors is because if I use resistors, it'll waste half the energy. But if you do this, half the energy is wasted anyway because all it's doing is going into damaging the batteries. So you don't actually get to use the energy that's... Okay, so anyway, what I ended up doing was I measured the resistance on this switch and the resistance on this switch. They're electronic switches, so they need 12 volts to go into them to make them work. So I just measured the resistance on both of them, and they both ended up being 15 ohms. They were both the same. Uh, so I got two resistors that were 15 to 20 ohms, and I connected one in line with each one of these. So that would take up half the voltage, actually a little over half because I overestimated it a little. Uh, a little over half the voltage, so then you, these end up being run on 12 volts. So I wasted half the voltage 
uh, in these resistors. But that is much preferable to me over using the energy to damage the batteries or just having some fancy electronics that are that are not going to be 100% efficient anyway. They're going to waste some energy and it'll be much more complicated to repair and deal with if there's any problems. This way, I just have these two resistors here. If one burns out, gets damaged, I have a box of resistors. I can just find the right resistance and, and put it in there. So that's what I did. It's a very simple solution. And this solution only works as long as you have um, known resistances in the things you're using. You couldn't just have like a bunch of 24 volt or like a 24 volt power supply and have some kind of fancy resistor circuit that you could plug any 12 volt thing into. You would have to actually know the resistance of the 12 volt thing and match it with the appropriate resistor. But since these don't change, the resistors are there and that's it. I don't have to deal with anything now. So that's why I did it. Clear as mud, right?